Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is for Monday's lesson. Right here, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about how to display data. One of the things we want to do right here is this is a table. Table. So first thing you need to know how to do is a table. Level of education of people uh, 25 to 30 years of age or older, right? We need a title. This is what, what we call our counts. All right, these are our rates or percentages or proportions. These right here is our categorical. These are categorical, okay? So the distribution in this case is the um, what values the variable takes and how often it takes these variables. So in other words, uh, we're taught our variables in this case are level of education, less than high school, high school graduates. So these are our variables. And um, what values do they take? Well, these are in thousands. These are in percentages. So that's how you display and talk about your tables. One of the things you might want to know, uh, look at is add these up. Do they add up to 39,868? In this case, no, they add up to 39,870. 39,870. That is due to what we call round off error. That is called round off error. So make sure the numbers match up. Uh, sometimes they won't always. They just, uh, for, for display, they usually tend to, to uh, round up or round down. So in this case, uh, the next thing we're going to look at are tables, or sorry, graph, bar graphs. In bar graphs, a couple of glaring things. These are your categories. These are your categories, okay? It's a level of education for those categories, and then we have our percentages again. Try to make sure you give me what these percentages are, 13%. 27%, uh, so on and so forth. That way, the people who are looking at the tables or the bar graphs know exactly what you're referring to. Uh, let's take a look at this one right here. This is dealing with U.S. region, and we're talking about percent using cell phones while driving. When you describe this, make sure you look at the graph and say, okay, the South has uh, overwhelmingly about 77% people driving and talking on the cell phone, whereas the East only have about 60, say, 3%, 63%. And you want to be able to compare and contrast where um, the West would be the next smallest, and then, of course, Midwest and South are almost the same. So there's more, maybe the East, because there's more uh, uh, trains or more commuter buses or so forth, um, railway systems, that's probably why they don't uh, talk and drive at the same time as much as we do in the South. All right, the next thing we want to talk about is uh, circle graphs. Pie charts and bar graphs are great uh, categorical displays. If you notice, these are your categories. High school graduates, not uh, high school graduate, advanced degrees, so on and so forth. Again, uh, the percentages are your quantitative displays. It tells you, uh, it's basically is your distribution. How, how is this distributed? Another thing you want to do is add up your percentages, 8.3, 12.9, and so forth. These happen to add up to 100.1%. So that's uh, notice that a pie chart should only add up to 100%. Why is this 100.1%? Again, it's round off error, round off error. The next thing we want to look at are highway gas mileage for model year 2009. Again, this is a table. Now, with this table, it's very easy to create what we call a dot plot. And the way we create a dot plot is, look at your smallest number, which happens to be 14. Look at your largest number, which happens to be 33. Uh, the, if you look at the numbers from 12 to 33, these are all these are all divisible by three. So you can take, you can make 12, 15, 18, 21, which goes by increments of three. The next thing you, knew, you do, once you have scaled and numbered your axis, you're going to mark a dot above the horizontal axis, uh, above that horizontal uh, axis uh, corresponding to each number. In this case, you have 13, 18, 22, and so on and so forth. Now, one thing you want to do is whenever you make create a dot plot is you want to be able to talk about the overall pattern. Okay? And the first thing you want to do is look for any deviations. That's the very first thing you look for. This number and this number, 13 and 18, clearly are at what we call outliers. They lie outside the normal uh, data. So these are what we call outliers. Okay?
and we'll talk about that more later on. Let's look at the next graph. Again, this is a table that displays everyone over the age of 65 in particular states or in the 50 states. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create what we call a stem and leaf plot. Now, you have two parts. You have the stem and then you have the leaf. For instance, if we take a number 13.5 and 7.0, we want to take the number to the far right. This is going to be our leaf. Okay? The rest of it is going to be our stem. So this is going to be our stem. And notice what we've done. We've put them in order. 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 17, because 17 is our highest stem. Once we have our stem, we want to draw a line, a vertical line. So we want to do this from smallest to largest. Once we have our stems done, we want to add our leaves. So 7.0, this is 7.0, this is 8.9%, this is 9.9%. When you get to this one, this is actually 10.1 and 10.0. You just start listing all your leaves. Okay, so these are your leaves. Once you have all your leaves added, you want to put them in order. So you need to order the leaves. That's the third step. Okay. Now, once you have done this, once you have created your stem and leaf plot, you wanted to be able to describe what it looks like. Now, the first thing you do, again, you describe uh, the shape of it with, a, and you begin with the deviations. Notice that this, if you, if you look at your data, this typically is the norm. But if you look at the 17.0, that seems to stick out like a sore thumb, as well as the 7.0%. All right? Those two things. This happens to be Florida. This happens to be Alaska. Why is Florida so much? Well, older people tend to like the warm weather. Why is Alaska so little? Well, older people tend to dislike the, the cold weather. They tend to gravitate towards Florida. That's why there's such a huge influx of 65 age and over. Now, look at these two. These happen to be outside this range, outside this range, but do we call them outliers? We will find that we will talk about that later on when we start mathematically figuring out what an outlier is. But in this case, we want to say they are outliers. They fall outside this range. So what we want to do is we want to talk about three things. We want to talk about the center. We want to talk about the spread. And we want to talk about the overall shape of the figure. In this case, the center we want to talk about is the midpoint. The midpoint. What's the middle number? Well, it could be about 13.3. The spread. The spread is you're going to discount the outliers. So we're going to discard the outliers. We're only going to go from here to here. So the spread is from 10% to 15%. We're going to talk about the spread of the general population. We're going to, like I said, eliminate all outliers. And then the shape. When you look at the shape of the figure, you look at this. All right. You basically say, well, is it a single peak? Is it a double peak? In this case, it's a single peak, like a mountain. If you were to set these up, but here's a single peak right here. Is it symmetrical? Is there some symmetry to it? Symmetrical. Okay. And we're going to talk about a couple more things here in a second. Um, so the next one. Now this is a histogram. Notice that in a histogram, the widths should be the same. You don't want a graph like this. All right? That is what you call a misleading statistic. You can't that is not a histogram. That is a misleading statistic. All of these must have the same width. Notice they put the counts on top so they know how much they're talking about. It's very very easy to look at that and go 7 is greater than 5 or 1 is greater than 3. All right, now we're going to talk about how to create a histogram. First step, divide the range of the data into classes of equal width. Use the stem and leaf plot. So notice, from 7 to 8, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 to 10, and so forth. Now, be careful with this. We want our percentages, we want to count the percentages. So we want the count of the percentages here. We want it to be equal to 7 or greater but less than 8. We want it to be greater than or equal to 8, but less than 9. And so on and so forth, all the way down to 17. 
All right. Now, once we have done that, what that allows us to do is this. Again, here's 7. So this one right here is from 7 to 8. Well, this one here is from 7 to 9, or sorry, from 8 to 9, so on and so forth. This one right here is from 17 to 18, so on and so forth. That gives us the same width all the way across. Now, once you have done that, what you're going to do is you're going to count. There's 1, 1, 1, 2, 6. If you notice, 1, 1, 1, 2, 6. It falls in line. So this is the number of states that have that percent that fall within that range. Within this range right here, there's only one state. Within this range right here of between 8 and 9 percent, you have one state. Okay? Between 17 and 18 percent, you have one state. You have basically one state. All right? So that's one. That's two. So on and so forth. Now, once you have created your histogram, once you have created your histogram, what you want to do is, again, you want to describe the overall pattern. You want to describe the overall pattern. So, is it symmetrical? So look at this. Is this symmetrical? In this case, I would say it's, it could be, but there is a slight skewness to the left. Now, there is a gap. Histograms don't have gaps unless that range is zero, unless that range is zero. Okay? Now, what I want to do, again, talk about the center, the spread, the shape. Now I want to talk about symmetry. This is approximately normal distribution. This next one right here is what we call skewed to the left because here's the majority of the data, but then there are some that are out here, and it kind of tails off to the left. If your data tails off to the right, this is what we call skewed right. Make sure you know that for tomorrow's lesson. And that concludes today's or Monday's lesson. Thank you.